All right, so let's explore some of these built-in functions in Transact SQL, and we'll start off by looking at some functions that are specifically designed for working with null values. Here's an example of how to work with nulls without using a function. For example, if we want to select last name and home phone from TBL employee, but we only want to find those where home phone is null, this is how we would do it. We just say where home phone is null. You can't use the equal sign with null unless you've set your database specifically to support that. But the standard is to have to use is, and we'll see here that there are a couple of employees that don't have home phones entered in the database. Now, sometimes what you're going to want to do is to replace null values with some other value. For example, let's say that here we wanted instead of null to say no phone. Here's how we could do it. I'm going to select last name and then use this function called is null. And is null takes one parameter that is an expression that you're going to test for null. Okay? The second argument here is an expression that will be substituted for any null values that you find. So basically what is null does is it says, if I find a null, convert it to this. Don't be confused by is null if you've worked in other languages that use that same name differently. There are other languages that will use is null as a function to test for null values. That's not how it's done here in T-SQL. To test for null values, you use is null as we showed you here, two separate words. When you use those two words together in one form, in one function together, it has a separate meaning of checking for nulls and substituting another value. So when I run this, instead of getting just back null, I'm going to get back the words no phone because we said here that we wanted to substitute. And of course, I don't only have to look now at those where home phone is null. I'll just delete this execute this line and now you'll see that I'll get back phone numbers when we have them but if there is no phone number it'll say no phone. Now sometimes you're going to want to do your conversion in the other direction. In other words you're going to want to convert to nulls rather than away from nulls. Il is null is where you start with a null value and change it to something else. Here we have an example of null if. Null if means if something is not a null, some other value, I want to convert it to a null. And I'll show you why that's useful. Here we're taking an average of a set of numbers, okay? Now, one advantage of nulls when you're taking an average is that they simply aren't going to be counted at all in your average. Perhaps we have a set of numbers where rather than nulls, we have zeros but we don't want to count the zeros. We don't want them to bring down the average because perhaps those zeros aren't really zeros that need to be counted. It just means there was no value there. So what we want to do is we want to convert our zeros to a null value for the purpose of coming up with an average that doesn't include those zeros in the count or in the sum that goes into the computation of the average. Okay? So what I can do here is I can select the average of null if price zero. In other words, change to null if the price is zero in TBL product. Okay? Run that, and I get back the average here. If I had run this statement without using null if, and if there were any items in there that had a price of zero, they would have brought down the average. And maybe I don't want those zero prices to bring down the average. Maybe those are just items where we haven't added a price yet. That's the reason you would use null if. Sometimes you're going to have a series of values, some of which are null, some of which aren't, and you want to find the first one that isn't a null. Okay? That's what this function coalesce is for. The coalesce function allows you to look at a series of values and automatically extract the first one that isn't null. So this will show us some interesting things. I'll run this. 
Notice that what I got back was 10, which is the result of 5 times 2. Notice that 3 plus null actually is a null. Any time that you include null in a mathematical expression, the entire expression evaluates to null. And again, this means null is, this is because null is interpreted as meaning I don't know. So if we don't know what this value is, we certainly don't know what 3 plus that value is, and the same thing with multiplication. Now you may be wondering about what would be a practical example where you need to use this coalesce. And actually, Books Online has a pretty good example. So let me show you how we can bring up Books Online very easily here. I'll just double click on Coalesce. If you hit F1, it won't work. I've tried it. You need to hit Shift F1 in order to bring up help automatically for a particular item that's highlighted in the Query Analyzer. And here, if we look at the example of for Coalesce, I'll just scroll down and get to it. The idea here is that we have a table that includes for an employee, one field for hourly wage, another field for salary, another field for commission, and any given employee is either going to have an entry in hourly wage or in salary or in commission, not in all three. Okay? So some of these will be null and only one of them will actually have a value in it that would be an example where you might want to use coalesce. And so here what they're doing is they're using coalesce to either give you hourly wage times 40 times 52. In other words, what would the yearly salary be, the annual salary be for this person based on their hourly wage? Or to select salary, which is an annual number, or to select commission times the sales value for that person. So whichever one of those is not null is the one that will be automatically extracted using coalesce. And here it's being cast as a money data type and returned as total salary. That's a good example of where you might want to use coalesce. All right, moving on, we have some other built-in functions that you'll find useful. Here's one is numeric. If you ever simply need to evaluate whether a value is a numeric value or an alpha value, for example, in our case, zip code, we can take a look. This is numeric either returns true or false, and in transact SQL, true is the value 1 and false is the value zero. So if we're unsure whether our zip codes that we're working with are text or numeric, we can look here and see, oh, it is indeed numeric. If we had a null zip code, what you would see over here would be a zero. In other words, nulls are not numeric. And if we had any zip codes from Canada or whatever, and this was actually a uh, text field that could accommodate alphanumeric characters, then just the Canadian values that included alpha characters would come back with a value of zero. Even if this was a varchar field, if all of the characters in it were numeric digits, isNumeric will return one. So that's how you can use isNumeric. 